is going to be a lot more adopted. So let's, let's switch gears and talk about the third leg of the triangle, clouds, cloud providers, and where you try this sort of system and, and where we think it's going. But you know, I guess our, again, we started by saying we developed on our laptops, called those little clouds. Then we moved to a couple ragtag machines, and, and we called that our little cloud. Then we graduated to a couple data centers. We ran in Rackspace for a little bit. We ran in Terramark for a little bit. We run in our own data centers. So we kind of believe, you know, this world of my cloud, your cloud, internal, external, public, hybrid. You know, the idea is that you need to bring your code to the cloud that meets your needs. Sometimes that cloud is, is in your data center. Sometimes it's in a public data center. Sometimes it's in a secure data center with armed guards and machine guns around it. Um, you know, we don't really care. Our, our system is designed to say, we're kind of cloud and platform agnostic. We'll run on a piece of infrastructure. And we don't get too worked up about whose infrastructure it really is and, and the environment that it's running in. Yeah, and I think, to Mark's point, that's, that's a pretty powerful statement uh, in terms of Think about the ecosystem as it exists today. You know, think about how many times people would say, wow, I really like that. Can I run that on site? No. Can I do this with this? No. Uh, what happens if I want to take my stuff and go over here? No. And so what we really strive for, and I think we did a pretty good job, and we're going to keep doing a good job, I hope, in terms of the evolution of the system, is when people ask those questions, we say yes. So what Mark's talking about here is, you know, well, can I run this just on my laptop? Yes. Can I run it in my own data center on my own computers? Yes. Can I run it my own provider with machines over there? Yes. Can I run it from my laptop? Can I can I run it off of a memory stick? I mean, how big is a how how big does a cloud really have to be to be cloudy? I imagine in uh, in Pivotal's case, there's a lot of times when you just want to when you want to segregate for your clients and say, this client here's the little cloud for this client, here's the little cloud for that client. Nothing's commingled, but it's. It has all the cloud characteristics of elasticity and scale and, and easy, easy on-ramp. And I think that those are really the compelling factors. It's not the big, big cloud that always is, is the answer. So let's, let's talk about the smallest possible cloud, the single VM cloud, and what we can do with a single VM cloud. Sure. And, and so we'll Mark, switch to a demo for that. And Mark talked about it. You know, we had to start somewhere in terms of developing actually on our own uh, uh, laptops and so what I have here is I have a bare bones Macintosh standard issue 13 inch MacBook um, and we're going to go ahead and just stand up a, a micro cloud and we'll all keep our fingers crossed and so this is a distributed system this isn't something that's totally different running in Cloud Foundry the service or one of our vCloud provider partners versus what's running on your laptop everything is exactly the same and as you can tell, engineers pick the name. So please be, be kind to us in terms of some of this. So it's essentially spinning up a whole cloud, everything complete on here. And what you're also noticing quickly is that the same services that are in Cloud Foundry are actually also being spun up. So this isn't watered down. You can just develop only maybe you know, a simple Sinatra app versus something else. Now when so we depending on the size of that machine and that VM, you could probably run a, you know, 20 or so Sinatra apps, maybe a couple Java apps, and basically what you could do on that machine natively. But now VMC becomes your interface. You have instances, so if you're trying to, to debug or develop a multi-instance front end, you can do that on, on a machine locally like this, or you can go into a, a production cloud. Yeah, and so here's one of the big keys, uh, again, a design point of the system is we want what we're just about to do now to be very, very fast, very, very lightweight. And so I'm essentially going to say, target my local cloud. Uh, VCAP.me is a global DNS entry, but it just points to 127.001, which is what we just started up. And so now if I do the VMC info like we did with Cloud Foundry, where the system was very big, um, and even my capacity within the system was very big, you know, this one might say a little bit different. Now it's saying I can still do kind of the same things. It's kind of running the same different types of apps. So I'm going to go ahead and do our node simple, and I can say BMC push n. And again, I think I know what I'm doing. And so the, the, the message we're trying to get across here is, is I switched the target cloud to my local MacBook, and everything else is going to be exactly the same. So now I'm going to go ahead and say, OK, well, is this thing actually running? So n.vcap.me. Yep, it's running. 
All right, VMC instances n to 10. OK, the IP won't change because it's simply my loop back, right? But the ports are changing, I meaning there actually are those things running. VMC services. So I have Redis, Mongo, and MySQL. Very small versions of them, but they're all available. They're all running. We've taken the pain of setting them up, doing everything we need to do. You as a developer just need to bind to those. And so again, the create service, I'll create a Redis service, and I'll say bind it to end. And so all of these things that you're doing, you're interacting with a service cloud and now a small cloud that's actually running on my laptop. And nothing changes. We're so doing the exact same thing. We've already shown you, you know, at the framework level by supporting multiple frameworks, we've kind of leveled the playing field there that says, you know, come to our cloud, bring your framework. If we don't run it, go hack on some code, send us a pull request, and, and we'll run it. Um, but we have, a, we have a pretty good offering out of the gate. With, with this cloud thing, we're showing you the next degree of portability where you can say, oh, I, have, I take all that for granted that I can push apps into your cloud and bring my framework and, and use your services. But now I want mobility across clouds. So this is you know, Paul's reference to the Hotel California where you can come in, but you can't get out. Here, we made it so easy to, to move around that just VMC target and you pick a cloud and, and you're running on that cloud. I think if, if you look architecturally, what did we do to enable that? If you go look at the code and look at the architecture, you'll see that we have a core inner shell kernel that that's the enabler for this multi-cloud approach. Our core inner shell doesn't really know about the, the infrastructure that's sitting on top of it. It needs a network, it needs processes, it needs some containment, um, but it doesn't have to know about AMIs or VMs or vSpheres or vCloud APIs or, or any of that stuff. It's really a, a raw kernel that will let you run a cloud on bare metal, on vSphere, on vCloud, on public clouds, on private clouds, inside or outside, with full symmetry across the spectrum of clouds.